I guess we can start. Time is up. Hello, everyone. My name is Alexandria Kamzeva. I speak here as a representative of the program Committee Lapa. Also, I do all sorts of activities in the School of Systemic Analysis set, where I do public interviewing. And today I would like to speak about the role of the system analyst, business analyst in UAT. Before I start telling you about UAT, I would like to tell you about my personal experience, why I decided to speak about that. I've been into system analysis for more than 10 years. Before that, I was to be in both integrator and in-house development. I had all sorts of different state-run projects and different assignments when I had to do everything on the UAT. And also I did UATs in large strategic projects in the internal development. Also, as a manager, I participate in the optimization of various processes. Also, we work with UAT there. The plan of my presentation today, first we'll speak about why UAT is important, what is UAT and why we need it, how to prepare for that, how to do UAT and how to launch products after we've done user acceptance testing. I guess it will be useful both for the system and business analysts and managers of system, system and business analysts, product managers, and many other actors or one way or another related to the development. Why UAT is important? Let's recall a picture of what a customer expects from us and what is the end result. And here we always realize that there might be all sorts of problems in communication and how this communications and expectation, uh, how these expectations are communicated. And one of the principal stages here is UAT, when we can verify expectations of the business, whether they're met or not. If they're not met, then what can we do about that? As I told you, what, what other problems can we be facing now when products are launched? Sometimes one can see a picture that UAT is not even in the plans. When we have developed something, we have tested something, perhaps we have checked against the business something, and we launch it. And then we see a lot of problems popping up. I will tell them, you about them later. So when we don't do user acceptance testing, it can always lead to problems or consequences. They can be different, starting from the closure of the company and up to some small risks. What uh, examples am I aware of? They started a prepayment for some of the goods in the uh, eShop. They have good express tested it. It looks like it works. The prepayment works. And then uh, say accountancy found an error. And this error led to the billing done wrongly. And if the billing is done wrongly, then they have to pay a fine or even have to suspend the operation of the company for a number of days. For a large internet shop, it might be a serious, serious problem and huge losses. But now in this case, the story was quite good. They just rolled it back and they manually corrected this huge number of bills. And then because UAT was not planned, they couldn't in any way to find required resources to improve the system. And as a result, it took them six months where a whole quarter it was suspended. It's a huge problem because we expect that we're going to get some profit out of it and it didn't happen for the whole quarter. Then it happened. And then why is this topic important for an analyst? An analyst during such UATs can see the result of his or her work. It can be good, it can, might not be so good. And the analyst gets uh, feedback from the field. If he can see how business process works, they can get feedback from all the end users, from their managers, 
from whoever is involved in the process. And of course, it's a huge motivation for them and teaches them things because they can find errors that they never thought about. And this error-based training is perfect and it always for the benefit. For a manager, it is important also to understand that this is an important motivational instrument and has a development effect for of the employees. Besides, they also see it as part of an independent examination. They see the quality of system analysis and also get efficient feedback from whoever is engaged in the process, which contains a lot of potential profit. And the managers are advised not to forget to give such great such opportunities if they can, of course, build the processes and to do UAT for their people. I've been talking for a while now, and I never mentioned what UAT is all about. If we believe ISTQB certification, UAT is one of the acceptance testing. Acceptance test testing is one of the stages in the development of the product, project, and system. And it's needed to assess the readiness of the system for its deployment and it's used by end users. In fact, acceptance testing can be uh, different in types. They, there's a separate one, testing and contract acceptance testing. Many companies, development companies work exactly like this when there is um, interfacing between the contracted development and the client. There is operational testing, alpha and beta testing, and user acceptance testing. Today, we're going to speak only about user acceptance testing because all of other types have their own specificities and differences. Why do we do UAT? To check uh, the expectations of the business vis-a-vis -vis changes, to identify errors, unexpected costs, and risks in the changed business processes. In my example with the billing, for instance, it was clear that there is such a risk. It was clear what to do in that case. We roll it back. But there are situations when we can potentially live with that, which is accepted as a new reality. And for a certain time, we have to reconfigure it manually. And thirdly, UAT minimizes risks of critical errors after the launch of changes. In my example with the billing, if we did UAT correctly, when we could have described it uh, bullet point at a time, there would be one or two errors. We would have uh, corrected one or two uh, check or re received and checked. Another important thing is when we verify the readiness of the user for these changes, because sometimes it happens that first, there are not always clear communications between the development and uh, business development can say that it is uh, the users are not ready for that or business uh, leaders can say that it will happen and uh, end users don't know this for instance they get the information but never notify the operators and as a result we get errors or we are not using useful functionality that can bring more revenue or it can lead to the loss or reduction of the client satisfaction, how to prepare UAT and how to implement it. I, as a disclaimer here, I'm talking only about my personal experience. Of course, it can be different from one company to another. In my presentation, I wanted to speak about some standard generic things, but it's not a full exhaustive list. It contains out of six bullet points. I'm going to dedicate some time to each one of them. First, we start by identifying the group of responsible people for doing UAT plan. It could be all sorts of roles depending on who your uh, development team consists of. Product owners, PMs, it can be QA. And uh, here it's important to agree right away who is part of it. But the profit for business system analysts is definitely there. Then we have to prepare a checklist for UAT the checklist which will be relevant for specific changes. In other words, what can be included there? Inclusion of different settings. 
communication with external partners and systems. If, for instance, we want to test something for payment or a theme which is popular among retail is interaction with marking or labeling systems. If we want to test something and it somehow affects the acquisition of information by regulators, it's important to warn them about that. Also, there can be such basic bullet points that these instructions have been written. It's also important to verify and check it, not to forget it when it's going to work at a high speed. Next, we prepare the scenario and uh, approve it. First, we develop the plan that what we want to verify with the list of all the engaged participants and stakeholders, and they need to confirm that everything works as expected or something doesn't work. And what are we to do about this? This is like a tentative plan, what we always need to, do, to have, the number of scenario, the title of the scenario that includes such key notions for this changing business processes and the list of participants from the business side. Here, please note, uh, types of payment, types of refunds. These are some additional properties by which you can uh, filter the scenarios. If there are too many scenarios, for instance, there can be 20, 50 scenarios, and to somehow orient yourselves there and to filter it, it's good to have such filters in the first place. Then you need to describe each scenario with detailed information, the preconditions for the scenario, the roles, the activities under business processes to be checked, and the uh, systemic processes to be checked. It again can be represented as a table with the uh, item number, the role, the activities that need to be checked during this step and what needs to be checked in the system. Status in the system, uh, logs, uh, information in the database, etc. Again, we mention only what is important for our team. Then it's important to agree upon with other uh, uh, stakeholders and members of these scenarios. And it means that there should be adequate measures taken because not all the participants, not all the stakeholders like reading carefully. If they don't read it carefully, you need to meet with them and do uh, this. They start uh, engaging into this, they're interested in uh, doing all the checks, uh, then they know what to expect and they get involved in the process. If there are considerable changes, we even asked them to describe those scenarios. We set uh, deadlines and we interact with them on a continuous basis. After uh, preparing the scenario, we know what kind of information or data we need. We use test uh, data at the production to check all the processes that are important for business. So we create a list of uh, data. If we're speaking about retail, this might be orders, deliveries, in the banking sector, these might be documents that are necessary for uh, provision of loans. The list of data is uh, unique for each UAT. There are some general uh, characteristics like identifier of data, people responsible for data preparation, and the deadlines. And there's a life hack. If possible, we need to envisage some free data for uh, the scenario that goes beyond our plan. If we need clients with real documents for our scenarios, 
then we need to have a little bit more data than we initially need, just in case. So this is an example of uh, possible test data description. So here we have uh, data, uh, attributes of the data, responsible person and date. Then we need to organize the communication between the UAT participants. My experience shows that 20 30 people are usually participating in this process and we need to organize communication between them. It would be great to create a chat room in corporate messenger or you can create a separate branch in email. It's important to prepare a schedule for UAT and use corporate tools. And one more point, which is very uh, important, uh, user support. Well, sometimes uh, it is the weak link because the users face many errors and mistakes. They are not uh, prepared for uh, some rollout of some new products or components. When we are ready to launch, to roll out, it would be great to prepare a description and instruction describing business processes and what needs to be done in case of errors. Then we organize a meeting with the representatives of the client support to transfer knowledge to them hoping that uh, there will be no critical changes uh, when they provide, provide feedback, but still feedback is very, impossible, uh, very important. You know. So how to implement UAT? There are four items. First, clear communication uh, with all the participants. We have set up uh, all uh, communication channels and we need to provide information. So we need to provide regular updates on the status, on our UATs, on the launches. We speak about the schedule, about the implementation plan, preparatory phase, etc. So we need to keep colleagues up to date. And meetings and corporate calendar should be shared with all the participants. We need to book uh, negotiation rooms, uh, passes if needed, and uh, don't forget to record the meetings if it is needed. Before UAT, we need to check whether our product is ready. Why so? Because uh, people want to roll out their product after development as soon as possible. In order to roll out the product uh, quickly, usually we don't allocate a lot of time for UAT. So the last task is ready and then we do UAT the day after tomorrow. But of course, we need to understand that there might be mistakes, errors, the task might not be completed. And not only after that, we uh, communicate about that. If something goes wrong, please don't be ashamed to cancel UATs. Because it happens. We need to prepare all the test data. We have prepared the test data plan. We have all people responsible identified. We need to check that these people responsible have implemented what they needed and they did this in time. After that, we uh, conduct meetings according to the plan. For each step, it's good to record the results. Uh, again, you know, it's a production process and sometimes you think, oh, I will put it down later, I will record it later, but you might forget. That's why it's important to make notes 
to note all of the uh, mistakes that were made. And what if I spoke about the preparation of test data, that we need to have some extra or free test data, because the business guys say, okay, what if we press not this button, but another one? What if we put another status here? For this, we need some extra test data. It will allow us to run all the scenarios according to our plan, and then uh, we uh, will be able to run some extra scenarios with this extra data. And then it's important to summarize the results of UAT. We need to uh, record the status whether the project is launched or not launched, critical errors they exist or they don't exist, list all these critical errors and put down all the colleagues' expectations. When we check uh, the changes in business processes, we have business people sitting at the meeting and they say, oh yeah, maybe we need to add QR code here or maybe we need to add a reminder here or there. So please put down this feedback in order not to forget and to show to the business that we don't do this uh, at the time, but we will put it down, we will not forget, and then we will do it later. List of uh, errors or mistakes uh, revealed during UAT. We specify the scenario, the status, the uh, step at which uh, error occurred, what is the error itself, some screens, logs uh, to be attached, and comments. So we need to take all these into account. And then this information is sent to all the participants of the process. So we have checked everything. We believe that no mistakes are there. We want to launch the product. How do we launch? We uh, make sure that there are no um, errors or mistakes that could block the launch. After that, we reconcile with all the stakeholders. If we have 10 business units participating in the project, uh, in retail it's the warehouse, the delivery, the call center, we need to convey this information to them so that they convey this information to their employees. After that, we launch the product. Hooray! So, conclusions. It's important to realize that uh, your company needs UAT and it's important to be able to uh, rationalize the need for UAT. You, you show the numbers, you show previous experience, negative experience about your losses and gains. You can uh, quantify this and provide as an argument in favor of UAT. It is important to plan UAT carefully. If we don't plan it carefully, if we don't envisage enough time for the development, we might have problems with the resources, with the artifacts, or we uh, analysts will have to correct mistakes or analyze why we had these mistakes, and it takes a lot of time. And if you can allocate an analyst for the preparation and uh, launch of UAT, uh, I mean the analyst who was working in uh, this project, who was designing the changes. It is very important for an analyst for his uh, career development. Thank you for your attention. Would be glad to take your questions. My contact details are on the slide. Thank you.
So when there is an order from the client, it's quite clear how UAT looks like. You know, testing, you're testing against the requirements, you're testing against the client uh, desires. But if it is an in-house product, how do we do UAT there? Uh, you know, we cannot allocate maybe 400 people to test the system, in-house system but to uh, allocate two weeks for the system to be tested in parallel with the existing system, it might be more useful, maybe. Thank you for your question. Well, about parallel changes. Not always it uh, might be possible. We roll out changes and they might be efficient for all or part of the users depending on the nature nature of change. I was talking about the process. Uh, there might be a lot of people during this acceptance, but the preparation for this process should not be long, should not take a lot of time, because if it is lengthy and uh, resource consuming, people will not agree to that. Uh, when the price of the mistake if the price of the mistake is very high, then it is very useful. Like uh, uh, the halting company's operation, deterioration in the client experience. For example, we roll out some changes, but there might be processes happening in parallel. And we don't know whether the mistake, the error occurred due to these changes or something else. And we spend a lot of time uh, to figure out. So sometimes it is much better and simpler just to sit down and have this UAT. In my case, it took one week for 20, 30 scenarios. It's not too much, but we have a very good effect. All users know how to do this. In my case, users uh, didn't request the rights for the system operation. When we had UAT, we uh, had users and we told them, okay, open the system. They said, we can't open the system. We don't have any um, access to the system. And then we solved it. So in this particular case, um, nothing bad would have happened. But the price might be very high. Well, and my follow-up question is that usually for UAT you dedicate a limited number of personnel, not the whole department or business unit. In my experience, uh, we uh, had a test group of employees who run different scenarios. Everything was good. The system was rolled out into the production, and instead of 20, 30 users who were testing, 400 uh, were connected, and uh, new bugs were revealed, new errors were revealed, and we received negative feedback uh, about that, that this is not working, this is not working. Well. The question is whether we do it in a test environment or a production environment. In my case, uh, there cannot be fully fledged test environment. Everything is launched in the production environment, and this is good. Of course, yes, we can check uh, with the users, but if uh, a lot of users are uh, connected, then it might be too much of a load and it might crash. This might be the case, yes. If some companies understand that there will be a considerable um, load for this system, maybe then uh, you can do the stress uh, testing in such a case for this kind of product. If the system crash is not a big problem, then it's okay. But if uh, 
If the costs are critical for the company, then of course, yes, then you need to um, check the processes and maybe redo the processes. Thank you. I would like to start a discussion. You mentioned that UAD might be useless. I per perceive UAD as a kind of demo to the client. When you show to the client, here is our product, you can try it. In your case, does it look like differently or you don't show to your client what you have done? So we have pre-production, where we show the full copy of data from the production. And if necessary, we can, of course, uh, start a parallel operation of the system, linked uh, by an end-to-end -end ID. So the data will be paralleled in this case. And we'll see that this object in database is uh, in line with uh, the ID. Well, it's, it's great that you have a pre-production phase. No, we don't have a fully fledged pre-production. It's in a bank, no? No, I work in... Uh, agrotechnical sector, it's, it's not a bank. I worked in retail and I know a few about the uh, payment process and things, how it happens. Yeah, not always you have a production phase there because it's expensive. The question is how many systems you have, how you deploy the systems, what is the infrastructure, how to support this infrastructure. Maybe it is uh, really expensive to support a parallel infrastructure and maybe it's easier to roll out everything and then fix the bugs. But the cost of your error matters. You judge by this. If it's one system, then it's easier if you need to connect 20 systems and you don't have a pre-production cloud and line, then it's better to do it at the production phase. Under control, of course. Any more questions? Okay. What was the best question? Well, we had a discussion here. Maybe I'll give the t-shirt uh, 